WBSU Bull Donation Radio streaming worldwide from the boldest and the oldest HBCU in Maryland, Bowie State University. Once again, it's the rush hour. Big Kari, talk to us. Who's our next guest? It's Big Kari once again. Thank you guys for tuning in. We have a very, very, very special guest who's already in Bowie. So it's just was given. Why not highlight? Uh, we got Marty Mar in the building. Stop playing. I want to see. First and foremost, let's check your mental. How are you feeling from a 1 to 10 scale? Your mental capacity, your family, and your business on a scale of 1 to 10. 1 being bad, 10 being good. I got to say 10 right now, y'all, to be well, honest. Just for, uh, as far as, like, how I'm feeling all around, like, as a, as a, you know what I'm saying, as far as family go, like, health, you know what I'm saying, I'm blessed. Everybody in my family good, my team good, we eating, you know what I'm saying, so. 10 across the board. 10 across the board, that's oh, how I'm feeling. What's some of the ways that you uh use to combat stress and anxiety? I feel like with stress and anxiety, a big thing for me has always been just, like, knowing that you don't got to rush. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Like people Take your feel time. like, yeah, like sometimes you can feel that energy and feel like you gotta rush and make a, a, a decision based off impulse, and that you gotta control that. If you can control that beast, I feel like that's the key to it. Just controlling that anxiety and shit. You know, okay. forgive me. Sorry, Grandma. <laughs> <laughs> forgive me. Is it's it one the, more? My bad. Uh, yeah. Have you created a safe space for uh, your family and your closest circle? Safe space. Like but, when you say so that. So like, say uh, your homeboy coming like, yo, I ain't feeling it today. You know what I'm saying? Do y'all create a safe space for him to be open and vulnerable with y'all? Oh yeah, yeah. Most of my friends, like anybody who close to me for real, they know like they could talk to me about anything for real. I don't force it out of people, but at the end of the day, I always try to like feel like I, I just try to do what I would want somebody to do for me if I was going through something. You know what I'm saying? So we could talk about anything, like you know what I'm saying? If we cool and you know me like that, even people I don't know, like I try to make it like real open, you know what I'm saying? Like, of course, everybody got they, like, they line or whatever, but, you know what I'm saying? For the most part, I'm an easy person to talk to, so, okay. you know. Good, I, I wanna dive right into it. Who is Marty Mar? Marty Mar, so, I, I started, like, I'll say it like this, like, when I was growing up as a young, um, a lot of people around me was in sports, or like, you know, family was in sports heavy. Uh, Marty was like, Back then, they called me Marty. It was Marty. So when I found Marty, I feel like that was me finding my swag for real. As far as like, just instead of like, Marty's the guy who was different um, and was used to being a little insecure about being different. Okay. But when I went Marty, it was like, all right, I'm gonna take everything that's different about me and and, and make it. I'm gonna make it a positive. Like you know what I'm saying? Like, right. So instead of Marty and everything, Marty cool. Some people still call me that, but Marty's like, this is like a, a 2.0 type thing where I'm like just taking the piano and saying, it's cool to play piano, you know what I'm saying? Like it's a lot of cats out there who like, kind of like shun down on you for playing like classical music and all that. I'm gonna take everything and make it a plus, you know right. what I'm saying? So I would say Marty, I'm, I'm real laid back. Marty Mar love sports, Marty Mar love music. So I got to put everything I love in one and just mix it all together and stuff. That's how I try to look at it, bro. At what age did you know that you wanted to be an artist? Now, I want to know about the piano thing. How long have mm -hmm. you been playing the piano? So I started playing piano when I was like three or four years old. Um, okay. My mom and dad was always in music. Like my mom was more so, she always wanted to play, but she never really like could put her all into it because she was so big on this type of stuff. Like she was a writer, a journalist and everything. Mm -hmm. So she worked at BET for years um, doing stuff like this, like producing shows like this and producing shows like with Ted Riley and all kinds of she different. still got them connections. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you know what I'm saying? We're going to chat after. We're going to check. I need, I need, sure. I need, I no, need to definitely. go No, nah, for sure. She, she definitely still got connections. But when I was born, she put everything towards me. She stopped working there. And she had a piano. Like, when she was my age, she, she got her first piano before she got a car type stuff. She mm. chose the piano first. So, you know, my grandfather, I never got to meet him, but they paid for that jump. And I feel like, you know, it's crazy for me to be 25 and see how something that they bought when my mom was 25, see how that changed my life. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So I've been playing since I was four. Um, classical, jazz, and I never really was too big on the gospel, but... I feel like I'm really, I'm really, I'm really spiritual, spiritual. I'm a spiritual person, not religious, but I feel connected to the instrument. Like mm -hmm. when I'm, when I'm frustrated, I should have answered your first question like this. Like when I'm frustrated with something, whether it be like, you know, personal stuff, school, whatever, you know what I'm saying? Like I go and play the piano. Like that really calms my spirit. So yeah. 
you know, that's always been one of my mechanisms as far as like just, you know what I'm saying? Like piano really bring me peace. You, I feel you connected. Any other instruments? I played clarinet, uh I played clarinet by by force. It wasn't like my choice, but I played that at school and I played drums for a little bit. Do you play by ear only or you like read I can read the music because I played the clarinet and all that. I'm going to be real. Playing the clarinet, if anything, it forced me to have to read music. But I learned everything better by ear. Like, yeah. on piano, I always could just hear a song. And then even when I was young, I could just figure it out. Like, it's like, I don't know. I just kind of can separate each sound in my head and process what I'm hearing and then figure it out. Like, you know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Like, it just, it's like math to me in a sense. Like, if you hear, if you hear a chord, you know it's three notes. You know what I'm right. saying? So it's little stuff like that that I kept. Just like in my bag type stuff with the piano. Do you have any um, habits that you inhab that you inhabit before you go play? Mm -hmm. That's a good question. I've noticed lately, like something that I do in my head, I always like me and my me and my cousin, my dog and shout out my dog Aunt Cowan, man. Um, something we always say is never too high, never too low. So it's like, even when you about to like embark on like a big moment or whatever the case may be, it could be like a show, it could be like, uh, it could be an interview, you know what I'm saying? Like just an opportunity, something I always do before I go on stage, you know, of course I pray first, but then I always just find something to put in my head to remind me like, you ain't nowhere near where you try and get yet, you know what mm -hmm. I'm saying? So whether it's a thousand people in the crowd or however many people in the crowd, it could be five people in the crowd, it could be a thousand people in the crowd. I just do that so that way I feel more so like I'm not thinking about all that and more so just focused on my task at hand because it's In one step at a time. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Everything's one step at a time. So that's what I be trying to do. So how is it like being a Bowie student and also trying to juggle the outside artists and the outside things that you got going on? Man, for the longest time, I felt like I felt like it was impossible. I felt like I had to, like, I remember like in 2017, that was when I first left Bowie. Um, I felt like I was up. I, I, I just honestly like I just felt like I was up this young wasting time because it wasn't like I was getting any real life experience, and I felt like everybody was trying to tell me which way to go and didn't know what I was trying to do. Mm -hmm. Everybody tries to make me like strictly like piano, piano, because they know they know who I am. They know my father. You know what I'm saying? So they try to like you know they want me. They want to see me walk in his footsteps in a sense because a lot of people got respect for my pops as, as far as the piano go. Um, and jazz music in general. So if you love jazz, you know my dad and everything. Marcus Roberts, he um, taught me a lot of, uh, pretty much everything I know about the, the piano and everything. So um, a lot of people made me feel like I was wasting time up here just because I felt like the primary focus wasn't on what I wanted to do and what was in my heart to do type stuff, which is be the best, I wanted, I wanted to be the best artist I could possibly be. And um, you know, piano is great. It gave me the tools to do everything, but School kind of made me feel like I was like juggling too much and not able to focus on the primary focus, which at the time was artistry, mm -hmm. you know, which it still is like today. So, but now being here, I can say like, you know, I'm older, I'm more mature, you know what I'm saying? I'm taking, I'm taking more of a, uh, I got more of a developed mindset as far as like knowing how to take every little piece and every little avenue and merge it together, you know what I'm saying? Because if you really look at it, all this stuff is not, it's literally like people out here who couldn't afford to be here type right. stuff, like who, who didn't even have people who cared whether they were in school or not. You know what I'm saying? So like, you gotta take everything as like a, everything is literally like a piece to the puzzle. Like, you know what I'm saying? So it, it's not easy, but it's definitely worth it, I feel like now, you know what I'm saying? Finishing that degree, you know what I'm saying? And I, I don't like quitting things anyway, so. Might as well get it out the way. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Let's get, let's get into some artistry, right? Um, what's some of your musical influences? So, um, that's a good question. I got so many, bro. But if I had to say, like, when I was finding my sound in the beginning, like when I, well, maybe when the rap was Lil Wayne. Uh, dedication for mm -hmm. that project. Like everybody like, says that. Lil Wayne. Everybody yes. says Lil Wayne. Yeah, yeah, I ain't gonna lie. Like that was like what made me want to rap. So far as artistry goes, before I was doing any vocals, I was really on some Kanye stuff. Just like just making beats on my my. I had an eighty eight key, uh, eighty eight keyboard, um, little MIDI joint. You know what I'm saying? Like four four or five tracks on that joint. I was making beats on there. You know what I'm saying? No computer at the time. But at the end of the day, uh, when I heard that dedication full, 
was like, dang, like, how, how is he getting on these songs? These not even his songs type stuff. Mm-hmm. And he's making them jumps like 10 times better. Like, right. he rapping on these jumps like, bro, I just remember hearing that. I was like, bro, I could do this. Let me go ahead and write something. So I started writing a little bit, recording on my iPhone, sending that joint out. Like, I went to DeMatha, so it was like yeah, a real. Flowers. Oh, yeah? <laughs> yeah? That's tough. Yeah, bro. Like, I, I know a lot of people from every school because I started off going to, like, I went to um, Robert Goddard French Immersion, mm-hmm. so a lot of my peers went from there to Flowers or, or Bowie, Duval, all over the joint. So, but I just remember when I heard that it made me want to rap. So I put I put the joint on my iPhone, sent it out, came to school the next day. Everybody heard the joint. You know what I'm saying? So I was like, oh, well, I'm a got something. Like if they if people rock with me like this or some little, like, you know what I'm saying? Just some fun stuff. Like, nothing means, it wasn't no studio back then. It was straight iPhone. Mm-hmm. So, you feel me? So, iPhone 4. <laughs> yeah, yeah, so, look, tell you, not I'm stuck in 2015, so we could chat about it. We right there with it then, yeah. already, bro. Yeah, let me figure out this garage band. What's going on? <laughs> nah, for real. We ain't had garage band. <laughs> we ain't had garage That's what I'm saying. We ain't had garage band <laughs> at the time. I'm telling you. But voice memos are still new to us. That's exactly <laughs> what I was doing, though. Yeah, with the text you talking about. Yeah, yeah, yeah I'm already right, shocked. Now, I was using voice memo or audio memo, whatever it's called, just to record. And then I had my speakers playing the beat, and I'm just rapping over that drum. Mm-hmm. And then I send it to my man. Next thing you know, everybody heard the drum. So that's how I started rapping. And then I met people who brought me in the studio and stuff. So once I started learning that, Chris Brown is another real big influence of mine. Because like, sonically and vocally, we, I feel like a lot, of, a lot of songs we make are in the same type register. Not saying I can sing nothing like Chris Brown, but I'm just saying, like, I feel like he's influenced my sound a lot. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? Especially being from the, you know, the DMV. I know everybody separate the DMV and stuff. I don't look at it like that. I look at it like if it's gonna be the DMV, it need to be unity. You know what I'm saying? I don't care if it's Baltimore. I don't care if it's Baltimore, P- PG County. Waldorf. You feel know I me? Mean? Like <laughs> I don't see why people try, you know, separate that. But I feel like we got a unique sound and stuff. So I would say Chris Brown, Lil Wayne, uh, and Stevie Wonder for sure. Mm. Cause I feel like merging the piano with all this stuff. And, and listening to Stevie Wonder, he got a, a unique style of play. And with piano, I have a unique sound. My pops always told me that, like, like yo, it's hard. To, it's everybody can play an instrument, but it's another thing to have like a sound where if you start playing, like I'm in, a, I could be in a practice room and you can't see me, but you know it's me. You know what I'm saying? Like that's actually hear, true because we all knew that. Nah, you remember? I remember me? hearing you. I remember. That's real. Like, I had people tell me that, and when I started hearing like people like more so. In my age group telling me, I'm like, oh, all right. So my dad and I just rapping type stuff. So that that those are the biggest influences I would say outside of my um my family, you know, my pops. My As of mom. right now, are there any um local artists that you or maybe not local artists? Local, that you one local and one yeah. industry uh, artist. One local artist that I've worked with in what capacity, like in terms of production or in terms of rapping or yeah, you, it's up to you. If you want to work with them, well, tell us if you have, who you work with. Uh, I want to know. In the area I work with, I got a, a a real close. So I got a real like close home, like as far as like my team and everything. I work with uh, I work with a lot of different artists, like Young TGSG. That's my dog, one of my closest friends in the music. I feel like you know when you got real friends that you can actually grow up and see develop and stuff like yeah. that. I'm not into the whole popularity contest thing. Mm-hmm. But, you know, there's some people who I feel like try to work with people based off that. I feel like you got to work with people based off the vibe that they give you. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? And the right. respect for your craft. So that's my dog, Young T, um, LOF. I said GSG. Back then he was GSG. Now he LOF. Loyalty over family. Shout out to him. Um, I've worked with Lizzle, Lizzle Thrax. If y'all heard, okay, I know y'all yeah, probably yeah, heard yeah, yeah. too he much. That's my dog. Uh-huh. You know what I'm saying? He's very talented. One of the best songwriters I met out here. As far as like writing hooks and everything, oh, like, his hooks be insane. You know yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah. How about now, John? He did back in the day. Yeah, yeah see, that see you see what I'm saying? That's a real. Classic. And see what I'm saying? So like, the area got a lot of talent. I've worked with um, I worked with Flock as well, Big Flock. Okay. Um, on production, I produced like when he first when he came home in 2019. I did his intro, ha ha. So that was um the first like. Placement I got. As far how as did like, that go about? Like, are you like, how are you getting network to going crazy. network? Right. How are you getting to network with so many different people in your area? Do you think it's just of you knowing somebody who knows somebody, or if mm-hmm. you don't know them, how do you make mm-hmm. that connection? Yeah, it's definitely like what you just said. As far as like, you know, the area is so small, 
Um, nine times out of ten, bro, we all we all going to the same places. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Like, if you think about it, it's, it's so small here, and this, the music scene is very like it's compact. It's not like 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 a LA or Atlanta where like you know what I'm saying. So it's not that hard to get up with people. It's more so just knowing what you know how to how the pieces to the puzzle connect. You know what I'm saying? Like one one guy might mess with you off some rap stuff. The other one might not because he's in a he's in a particular position in his career where he can't afford to, and mm-hmm. it's like you got to see that and be like, oh, all right, well if he's not rocking with me on that way, let me get him, let me go ahead and get him some beats right quick. You see what I'm saying? And just see how. And I'm not speaking on nobody in particular, but I'm just saying in general, the way I tried to maneuver it was always like just doing something that like it's not like I'm asking for a favor. I'm showing you my worth. If you with it, you with it. That's why I was saying like you got to respect people's craft. And you gotta you gotta want to work with them. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So, with 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 uh with everybody I just named though, it was very I would say very organic as far as like you know we st- we stand on business, but a lot of the connections I made was very organic stuff that just you walk in the room and people did type stuff. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like you ain't even planned it type stuff. So okay. that's that's how most of that went locally. I want to talk about any um singles that you maybe previously put out. Okay. I want to talk about that. And I also want to talk about the visuals that you put towards those. Okay. So, uh, which, which one is like your favorite? Um, your favorite single and favorite visual? Mm-hmm. Okay. See, if if I'm being honest right now, Gold Rush, Gold Rush is probably my favorite single. That's the official record for the Maryland Terrapins. So, the reason mm-hmm. why that one's my favorite is because, number one, my cousin played it in College Park for like four years. He was a starting point guard, Anthony Cowan. Um, and we grew up together. Like, we eight days apart, born eight days apart. And my whole family went to Maryland. Like, everybody went to Maryland. So, so it's kind of like, me personally, I ain't get in that zone. You know what I'm saying? So that's cool. I ain't never, like, feel no type of way about that. Because for real, for real, I ain't care where I went as long as I was, you know what I'm saying? Elevating. Right. You know what I'm saying? I'm going to be real. Shout out to HBCU. Right. Anyway. And Bush, exactly. And Bush, they had everything I really wanted at the end of the day anyway. So it wasn't more so about the school. It's not about the school. It's more so just the story. Because, like, yeah. just seeing how, like, we grew up, like, playing basketball up there to, you know, my cousin breaking records up there and watching mm-hmm. him do what he did, won, won a championship up that jump, you know, and, um, it always made me want to be a part of the program, however I could, and wear that red and gold. You know what I'm saying? So I would say Gold Rush just because I got the chance to do what I do and what I flourish in. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Basketball, I love basketball, but at some point, you know, the ball stopped bouncing for everybody. For me, it, bounced, it stopped bouncing way earlier. So at the end of the what day, you, you feel me? So like, I guess with that, um, when I found, when I met Connor and uh, and Mike Farrell, shout out to them. Um, it was like. It was almost kind of like destiny. You know what I'm saying? It was like destiny. Like they was looking for a local artist who could kind of put a be the voice of that program and kind of revamp it and bring the swag back. Is how they would say it. You know what I'm saying? So <laughs> uh, I feel like you know Gold Rush allowed me to not only produce um, and rap, but I composed. The, it was my like I said, the first time I actually got to put my music on sheet music and. and get that to a band and stuff like that so it seemed like everything that you kind of already because obviously like first of all we've been knowing each other for a minute Mm -hmm. and i've been following you forever we've been following each other forever so i just feel like every single piece you know people watch these i feel like every single piece you think that that's like the big like the big project do i think that's the biggest project i got going on right now right Mm, i mean i feel like every project hold his weight Mm -hmm. you know what i'm saying but what I can say about this one in particular is like... Is that like a milestone? Yeah, I would definitely say one of them. That's, it's like a milestone because, number one, it's like, that's corporate at that point. You know what I'm saying? Like, the way we moving and the the backing behind it is, is something I've never had before. It's kind of like almost working with a label in a sense. Like, mm-hmm. you know, you got... They got their goals and they... You know what I'm saying? You learn it. You learn how to... You, you, you learn how to politic. You know what I'm saying? You learn how to handle business with folks. You know what I'm saying? So... And I don't got no label or nothing like that, so I'm doing all this independently. I felt like it gave me a chance to actually see what it's like to work with a whole body of, like, an organization. It's such a good look. Mm-hmm. You know it what I'm saying? such a good look. I looked at the song, and I saw the visuals. The visuals is crazy. crazy. Thank God. Now, I appreciate that. Visuals is crazy. Connor, my man, um, Connor and Mike Farrell from UMD, they, okay. uh, they both, they both, uh, directed it. And, Are they students, exactly. or they're, like, Nah, nah, they, um, faculty. they, like, faculty. Yeah, they okay. faculty. Okay. Mike is, like, the head of the, the athletic departments. Um, video and everything, so yeah, they are that, like they, 
y'all had the clips from the games and stuff like that. I said, "There's no way." Yeah. I'm like, "This is this is tough." This thank is tough. you. Thank you. And no, I'm like nobody else. I haven't seen nobody else do something like right. that. Right. That's real, and that's what I really like. So that's some NBA level type. Yeah, stuff that I, I feel thank like that you. should be for thank every. Y'all. I feel like that should be like for every school at this yeah. point. Like yeah, yeah the, what they kept artist. saying is like, "Yo, name a school that got their own song." You know what I'm right. saying? They, a basketball team in general that got their own song. And I was like, yeah, like the crazy thing is when I first started rapping, I, my cousin played for DC Assault. That's one of the biggest AAU organizations of course. In, in, the, in AAU, you know what I'm saying? Like, um, and a lot of my dogs supported me from DC Assault. And that was how, you know, I started doing the sport, music for sports. Cause I, I saw it was like a lane nobody was attacking. And I'm like, Shit. I'm like, why not? You know what I'm saying? So I, I used to make songs and stamp everybody on the squad in a way that made them feel like, you know what I'm saying? Like, it's like you could tell I felt like put I put some, some real to yeah, thought yeah. into it. You know what I'm saying? And I feel like that's what makes the people want to support it. When you show them that, okay, he knows about, oh, wow. Like he, he had that pun on that line. He must know something about me type stuff. You know what I'm saying? So I guess like when I started doing that, then I went to the math and did it for them. Uh, the, the Do Your Dance record, shout out DM. Uh, they put a lot of light on that, you know what I'm saying, when I made a song for the football team at DeMatha. So uh, it, it wasn't new for me. Like I, I've always had that formula of, of making music for sports teams. So I feel like that's something I'm always, you know, it's always going to be there. Mm -hmm. But it, it means way more when you're doing it for hometown, like, you know what I'm saying, like hometown teams and stuff. Like DC Assault, DeMatha, University of Maryland, it's a blessing from God, I got to say. Because the fact that all that is organically done, like I got real family on every single one of those teams. Yeah. So for me, like it, that's definitely a milestone because it kind of took like I saw how I did the first one, I saw how I did the second one, and now to see where we at, it's like wow. It's like I, I feel like every single one after that, mm -hmm. we stay in the hurry up. <laughs> yeah. So you yeah, stay skinny. Have you reached out to the athletic department? Um, you know, doing something. Well, now that you released the video, you got the analytics. Yeah. Department. Right. No, I haven't. I haven't reached out to anybody about it yet i spoke to a couple players and stuff i know a couple players on the team and we we you know what i'm saying we laugh and joke about it but you know until somebody like really like reaches out or some like trying like I, and, and mind you i don't have a problem reaching out either it's like i would i would love to do that though mainly because you know while i'm here i feel like it's a way i can actually like physically feel how i'm affecting and impacting mm -hmm. the culture of it, you know? exactly you know what i'm saying so that's what it's about for me just being able to move the people. That's what we're supposed to do with what we, you know what I'm saying? What we do, like, the music is supposed to move people. It's not just supposed to be like a, you know what I'm saying? Like a talent you flex. You know Can we saying? talk about your plaque and how you went about that? Like, how was it obtaining that? So, it's a great it's a great story behind this joint, too. So, I got my first, um, my first platinum plaque working with Cash Money AP. Shout out to bro, shout out to Daniel Morris, shout out to Keo, young Keo. And um and my dog toned down for what? We uh so I was doing a lot of work in California at the time. Um physically or were you here? Physically, like no, nah, I wasn't even in school at this point. Like that's why I was kinda like like I was going to Cali a lot between twenty nineteen and twenty twenty one. You know what I'm saying? Uh, I just got back from Cali whole time, but it was San Francisco this time. Like I was in LA a lot between 2019 and 2021 and what that allowed me to do is network with a lot of different producers and stuff and when we met cash i had been doing a lot of piano stuff on rodeo drive that was giving me some exposure so like i had linked with polo g um at neiman marcus in beverly hills playing the piano on the fourth floor and that was like something that had just happened so my name was kind of buzzing a little bit out there um, when he had posted me on his story, a lot of producers was reaching out to me. A lot of people was reaching out in general, but Cash was already working with my engineer, Tone, my um, my dog. That's my dog, first and foremost. But essentially, first time I go to Cash's studio, I, I literally left the Neiman Marcus to go to Cash's joint for the first time. And when I walked in, they had this artist, his name is Fade. Fade is like a, he's a big Colombian artist, like a huge, like internationally known mm -hmm. artist. Okay. So it was My like cousin a, Columbia. You might know who he is. Yeah, oh yeah, most likely but I ain't gonna lie, a lot of people knew him. I woke up and so what I'm saying is like I had never done like I had never gotten a, pl a plaque period, but in terms of just 
production placements, period. I had never worked with an international artist. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? So working with Fade was like, yo, we making something completely different than what we used to making type stuff. Like the, the beats and everything, like the, the tempo and, and the cadence of the drums and everything was all like, it was different. So as soon as I started playing on the keys, like I walk in, we got acquainted with each other, you know what I'm saying? Was there a language barrier? Nah, I mean, it, it, no, nah, he speaks good English too. So okay, okay. It wasn't no like language barrier, but and as far as, as far as understanding what he's saying on the song, absolutely. Like, I don't yeah. understand what he's mm -hmm. saying on the song. <laughs> like, I could pick up little words because I speak a little French. So some of that stuff is a little like similar, you know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? But I, I can't make out every sentence. Right. But end of the day, that don't, like, that's the thing. Music is a language we all understand. So I started playing and he could tell me like, yo, I like that. Like, yo, keep that. You know what I'm saying? So I'm playing little riffs and, and runs and Fade, he's like, yo, that's, that's, that's hot. Keep that. You know what I'm saying? So we move to the next joint. By the time I'm finished, Keo come in later drums. Like he, he, he's crazy with the drums. Shout out my dog Keo too. Very talented. He produced Old Town Road by uh, oh, Lil Nas X. Lil Nas X. Okay. Yeah, man. Very talented, bro. So. He killing the drums, and then my boy Daniel Morris structured the joint. He structured the whole instrumental layout. Cash is going. Cash did what he did on it, but you know, Cash really just wanted to give everybody an opportunity to work. Yeah. And that was a blessing because that was the first time I ever worked with them. And when I made it, I didn't know we was, you know, what I'm saying, making something like that was gonna get a platinum plaque type stuff. They're used to that. Like for me, it's like coming from where we from, like mm -hmm. it, it, you don't see that a lot. You know what I'm saying? You Especially just here, honestly, to network and just have fun. Exactly. It seemed like he was having fun. I was having so much fun out there, like, and all I could really think about was like, yo, what we doing next? And that's where I'm at right now. So, I feel like um, that was a great experience because it, it showed me number one, like you gotta be ready for whatever when you're walking in in the job. You don't know what artist you cooking for. Like that's what that's what I love about production. So it's so spontaneous. And you don't gotta have one way of doing things. You know what I'm saying? So that was fun. You know what I'm saying? And um when we found out we found out a year later that it went platinum. Like I just I just found out. So <laughs> to me, you know, we made it in twenty twenty one. We just found out in twenty twenty two. So that was But big. that's a fast that's a fast like um What's the word? That's a fast um, turnaround. Turnaround, yeah. That's a really yeah. fast yeah. turnaround. For sure. Yeah, it could take some time. Like, you never know. Like, I know songs that be blowing up years later. Like, yeah. You know what I mean? So, yeah, that's why you, like, no matter what, no matter what you do, you put your best foot forward because you just never know who watching. You know what I'm saying? I want to know, what, when you first got the news, what was the first thing that you did after you got the news? Man, I couldn't even go back to sleep. I was like 5 a.m. <laughs> tone FaceTime. I'm like, bro, why you calling me? I got, I got class in the morning, bro. Like, you know what I'm saying? I bet so you didn't I, go to class after that. Right. I ain't gonna lie. I had right. to. I had to. You had to? Yeah, bro. Like that was like that's what I would have done in 2017. I wouldn't have won it. Mm. You know what I'm saying? You said I knew that. I'm, I would have been to class too. I gotta tell everybody about what I did. <laughs> everybody in class. I'm shutting the whole class on the whole. Matter of fact, day. I got something to say. <laughs> <laughs> it's crazy though, cause like a lot of people tell me I don't really put my stuff out there enough. Like I'm real laid back, real quiet. Like you know. But what I'm that's saying? okay because I feel like when you post something or when you make like when you speak like when it's time for you to speak, it's like you got such a huge artist that's been waiting. That's mm -hmm. what I really feel like. You yeah, might just have such right. a huge artist that just literally been waiting. Kind of mm -hmm. like um, the J Cole effect. Okay. Yeah. I yeah, say yeah. like kind of like the J Cole effect, just a little bit. That's I feel that. Bit. That's a good comparison. He was one of my favorite artists too, like rap wise. Like mm -hmm. I love the way he tells stories and everything, and I like how you said like how he he got all the he of course he got all the you know what I'm saying he got a huge fan base and everything fame and all that, but he know how to like just branch off and do his own thing. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Keep his peace that way. I respect that. Can I get any details on upcoming singles, albums, visuals? Yeah. So I got. I got work coming with a lot of different producers, but specifically, I'm most excited about a lot of the records I got with my dog Cash Money AP, my dog Nick Banger. We got some records coming. My dog Jose, Jose Beats. You know what I'm saying? I don't want to, I don't want to put too much out there because I really don't have the overall layout for everything yet. But I got a lot of great records. I would say, um, I got one with my dog Marty Zo. He's an international producer too. He um we got a we got a hit you know what I'm saying I, I feel like we got a banger so that's coming out in the near future but um bro, bro, I would just keep watching cause like I would keep watching out for the Maryland stuff cause we got a lot of stuff planned to keep pushing that record that's my main yeah. focus right now the Gold Rush you know what I'm saying so 
I'll probably have a couple shows coming up. You know what I'm saying? Okay. So, Shout out to the Go Rush. Yeah, yeah man. Go yeah, you got VIP tickets. Let a brother know. Please. Oh yeah, no, nah, sure. I got gotcha. you. Sure. Sure. No question. Yeah, I got. A, it's a couple games coming up, so you know, I got. I pretty much got the tickets for the whole season and everything. So. I they show love. To, I ain't never been to a UMD game, so what's up? Oh, yeah, I got y'all in. <laughs> so yeah, we definitely. Lock in, for sure. We but, definitely um, can do that. On your IG, right, you've highlighted mm -hmm. five states that you've been in. Which one out of those five are your favorite? That's a good you question. You got Miami, California, Atlanta, Detroit, and San Francisco. Damn. I would say California definitely my favorite out of all those. Atlanta, too. But I've spent more time in California and Atlanta than I have in the other ones. Mm -hmm. Like, I haven't spent that much time on the music scene in Miami. That that time that I went out there last, though, was, like, probably, like, that trip that, that I took. I was shooting a video, mm -hmm. and um, I went to a couple studios, but I ain't really done that much out there to be able to say, like, Miami, my favorite music-wise. But as far as, like, just in general, weather and all that, it would be Miami. So that would be my third. You know what I'm saying? So... San Francisco and Detroit, we was in and out. That was business. You know what I'm okay. saying? So that was like, we was there for three days, three, four days, and then we was out of there type of stuff. And every day was like, we had a schedule. So it wasn't like, you know what I'm saying? I got to really move how I, I could move if I was out there just on my own time. But um, San Fran was like that. I ain't gonna lie. Like, I, I love San Francisco and Detroit as far as how the shows went. Like, that was big. Like, working with Ray, Babyface Ray, and... Um, Bearline, shout out to Bearline for that opportunity, major opportunity, um, playing the keys for Ray and just seeing how they move. Babyface Ray, correct? Yeah, okay. Babyface Ray. Uh, it was the Red Bull Sound Clash. Mm -hmm. So that, like, I didn't even know how big that was coming into it. Like, that's something they've been doing for over 20 years now. Like, right. Snoop Dogg, like, all kind of artists. Like, everybody, you, you name it, Wale did it. Like, they, they had one in D.C., like, three years ago with Wale. Right on the yard, like in between the monument and everything. So mm -hmm. it's pretty much like a versus type thing where they take two artists and then they they battle it out type stuff. Like they'll play like six song sets, six song sets, and then they'll bring features out and then the other artists will do features. So the other artist this time was Larry June. If y'all uh, familiar yeah, with Larry yeah, June. Yeah, I know Larry June. Yeah, man. So I got a chance to meet him in his camp. Pretty much Larry June had a band, very talented. Shout out all my dogs on Larry's on Larry's band. They was all like that, like my man on the bass was like so. But essentially, when I met uh when I met them, they was rehearsing, and I'm looking like okay, so am I playing? I'm walking in the room for the first time. I'm like okay, so am I playing with a band type stuff? Nobody, you know what I'm saying, told me that. But I found out like essentially now Larry had the band, but uh Ray, it was just me and Ray. So like I'm on the keys and Ray rapping, you know what I'm saying? And then DJ Limelight, shout out DJ Limelights. Um, we, we lined up transitions on some of the songs where he would go into his scratches and stuff like that and his mix and all that. And then, so we would mix the MP3 with my piano for, um, for, uh, one of the songs that we did. But for the most part, that, that was a great experience because I had never been a part of something like that. It was like 2000 people mm. in the, in the crowd. And like, it's like two stages. Like that's, it was just different. Like that, the whole atmosphere is just crazy. Like filled with energy. You know what I'm saying? Like. And I'm playing and they like feeding off of that. So I'm like, yeah, mm. like we really like doing it. Like I had fun. So um that was great, great opportunity. Um, watching Ray and Berline, how they move and how they how they so organized and so like it's like very like they move strict, but they also have fun with it too. So I like I like seeing our people like as African Americans, just it's great seeing people successful with, with their creativity and stuff. So I got to learn a lot working with them, seeing how they move. Cause I know he having a big year. He having like a breakout year, you know what I'm saying? For him to show me as much love as he did. Shout out to Ray, man. Shout out Babyface Ray, bro. Appreciate you, bro. And uh, I appreciate you too, Barry Line, for the opportunity, man. So that was that was like, I'm just getting back from San Francisco. So um, it was all like crazy how everything was kind of back to back to back to back. You know what I'm saying? From the, the show with Ray and then the, the College Park zone, you know what I'm saying? Like the UMD zone, and then I'm at, I, I remember one day, like one day, like in the last two weeks, I looked on my Instagram and saw Meek Mill had posted me on his story. I'm like, oh wow, like, so we really moving, like, you know what I'm saying? It's like, if, I, feel, I feel as though when people start finding your old stuff and posting it, that's when you know you moving in a certain light, like your right. name must be circulating, you know what I'm saying? So, cause I posted a video like five months ago that Meek had just found out of nowhere, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So. Seeing all that just kind—it of, kind of just shows you like a lot of the stuff that you dream about 
it'd it be real. You just gotta take the steps to make it happen. You know what I'm saying? It's, it's, it's real stuff though. Like it's really possible. You can do anything you set your mind to, and that's that's what I be trying to push. You know what I'm saying? Because a lot of people don't, a lot of people don't really think like that. You know they what I'm don't. saying? A lot of people feel like, you know, you're supposed to just, I don't know, compromise the society and everything. And, and to some degree, you, we all have to in a way. But at the same time, as long as you know your end goal, I feel like it ain't nothing you can't do. So that's how I've been moving. That's how I've been stepping. And I'm going to keep moving like that. Feel me? Any last questions? I wanted to do the shout outs. Who you want to shout out? Man, shout out Bowie State, man. Shout out, shout out Bowie State. I want to shout out Dr. Pryor, too. Dr. Pryor, man, he's told me a lot of stuff up here that's really kind of like, Help me stay level headed throughout all this, cause I know he's mm-hmm. he's been there, you know what I'm saying, in his era, working with these these different artists, you know what I'm saying. So and trying to balance school and everything. So man, shout out anybody who's out there trying to make this happen and trying to stay in school at the same time, trying to work a job, trying to provide for your peoples. I feel that, you know what I'm saying, like, cause I know it ain't easy, but you could do it, and that's all you gotta remind yourself. Just say, I I am, I will, I can, you know what I'm saying. Every day you wake up. Just say that, you know, shout out, shout out to my family. I love y'all. Shout out um, anybody rocking with me genuinely, you know what I'm saying? Anybody that, that's out there showing support and love for what I do. I, I love y'all and I appreciate y'all. And we just going to keep on up in the school. I like it. I like it. I want to appreciate you for stopping by. Uh, you want to do the close out? I will. But first, before we do that, what are your social? Where can the people find you? Y'all can find me on all platforms at Marty Ma. That's M A W T Y M A W. Um, and then on TikTok, you can find me at Mozart. That's like a little alter ego I got. Cause Mo- Mozart, one of my favorite pianists or composers. So I go Mozart, M um, A W Z A R T. And then TikTok for my rap stuff is at Official Marty Ma. Uh, official Marty Ma as spelled. So. Those are my platforms. And then on all streaming platforms, Marty Mar, M A W T Y M A W. And YouTube as well. So, yeah. Well, thank you so much, Marty Mar, for coming to hang out with us at sure. the Rush Hour. You were tuning in with WBSU Bulldog Nation Radio, tuning in live with your hottest what? HBCU, Bowie <laughs> State University. Let's get it. Let's get it. There you go. That was awesome. No, no, I appreciate y'all for real.